Welcome to Good Friday Worship with Prince of Peace Lutheran Church and Preschool in Phoenix, Arizona. My name is Pastor Rick Sherrill. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this online Good Friday experience. We call this day good, despite the fact that it is filled with pain and humiliation and abandonment and suffering and death. We call this day good because God has turned this day into something amazing, something that continues to resonate in our hearts, in our lives, and in our world, even now. We walk with Jesus on the road to the cross, the road that he takes willingly for our sake, for the sake of the world, and for that, we say, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ability to remember, to place ourselves within events that we did not live ourselves, but that we can still experience, still feel to the depths of our souls. And so, Lord, we thank you that you continue to walk with us just as you walked willingly on the road to the cross long ago. Uphold us, Lord, and strengthen us for this journey today. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever wondered why we refer to the day Christ died as Good Friday? Seems somewhat strange, doesn't it? I mean, Friday is the day that he who was celebrated had become despised. He who was innocent was punished like the guilty. He who was the lion was slaughtered like a lamb. That doesn't seem good. And consider the Pharisees and their motives. For them, it was a premeditated murder, though it was actually a predestined sacrifice. They thought they were taking his life, though he was in fact surrendering it. Death was their goal, yet life was the outcome. Because God had other plans, he made one day affect all of eternity. He turned the wounds of one into healing for many. He transformed our worst acts of hate into the greatest expression of love. So that at the cross, we can hand over our sins in exchange for righteousness. We can lay down our burdens and pick up freedom. We can come broken, yet leave restored. The enemy thought it was going to be a bad day. We now call it good. And though we all thought it was the end, it was actually just the beginning. It seems God has a way of rescuing us from ourselves and flipping things around. Maybe that's why we call it Good Friday. I confess 
Jesus and his disciples came to an olive grove called Gethsemane. And Jesus said, sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be filled with horror and deep distress. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and watch with me. He went on a little farther and fell face down on the ground. He prayed that, if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Please, take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will, not mine. Then he returned and found the disciples asleep. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you stay awake? and watch with me even one hour. Keep alert and pray, otherwise temptation will overpower you. For though the spirit is willing, the body is weak. Then Jesus left them again and prayed, repeating his pleadings. Again, he returned to them and found them sleeping, for they just couldn't keep their eyes open and they didn't know what to say. When he returned to them the third time, he said, still sleeping, still resting, enough. The time has come. I, the son of man, am betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. Let us pray. Almighty God, your son cried out in despair before he went willingly to meet his fate. Help us to be obedient when you call us to action. In Jesus' holy name, amen. As Jesus said this, a mob approached, led by Judas, one of his twelve disciples. Judas walked over to Jesus and greeted him with a kiss. But Jesus said, Judas, do you betray me with a kiss? When the other disciples saw what was about to happen, they exclaimed, Lord, should we fight? We brought the swords. And one of them slashed at the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Jesus said, 
don't resist anymore. And he touched the place where the man's ear had been and healed him. Then Jesus spoke to the leading priests and captains of the temple guard and other leaders who headed the mob. Am I some dangerous criminal, he asked, that you have come armed with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there every day. But this is your moment, the time when the power of darkness reigns. Let us pray. God of power, you know what it is like to be betrayed by a close friend. Help us to live with clear eyes and clear motives as we follow you. Amen. How pale thou art with anguish, with sore abuse and scorn. How does thy face now anguish, which once was bright as morn? Thy grief and passion were all for sinners gain. Mine, mine was the transgression, but thine the deadly pain. Then people who had arrested Jesus led him to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of religious law and other leaders had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter was following far behind and eventually came to the courtyard of the high priest's house. He went in, sat with the guards, and waited to see what was going to happen to Jesus. Inside, the leading priests and the entire high council were trying to find witnesses who would lie about Jesus so they could put him to death. But even though they found many who agreed to give false witness, there was no testimony they could use. Finally, two men were found who declared, this man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, well, Aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus remained silent. Then the high priest said to him, I demand in the name of the living God that you tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus replied, You have said it. And in the future you will see me, the Son of Man, sitting at God's right hand in the place of power, and coming back on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror, shouting, Blasphemy! Why do we need other witnesses? You have all heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they shouted. He must die. Let us pray. Mighty God, we are so quick to judge. Grant us your grace so we may see others through your eyes. Amen. Lord, be my consolation. Shield me when I must die. Remind me.
Meanwhile, the guards lit a fire in the courtyard, and Peter joined them there. A servant girl came over and said to him, You were one of those with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. I don't know what you were talking about, he said. Later, out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, This man was with Jesus. Again, Peter denied it, this time with an oath. I don't even know the man, he said. A little later, some other bystanders came over to him and said, You must be one of them. We can tell by your Galilean accent. Peter said, I swear by God, I don't know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Suddenly, Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went away, crying bitterly. Let us pray. Lord God, your son chose to be weak before the powers of this world, and you worked your power through him. In our time of weakness, help us to turn to you, that your power may also work in us. Amen. Now Jesus was standing before Pilate, the Roman governor. Are you the king of the Jews? The governor asked him. Jesus replied, you have said it. But when the leading priests and other leaders made their accusations against him, Jesus remained silent. Don't you hear the many charges against you? Pilate demanded. But Jesus said nothing, much to the governor's great surprise. Now it was the governor's custom to release one prisoner to the crowd each year during the Passover celebration, anyone they wanted. This year there was a notorious criminal in prison, a man named Barabbas. As the crowds gathered before Pilate's house that morning, he asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? He knew very well that the Jewish leaders had arrested Jesus out of envy. Just then, as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him this message. Leave that innocent man alone, because I had a terrible nightmare about him last night. Meanwhile, the leading priests and other leaders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. So when the governor asked again, which of these two do you want me to release to you? The crowd shouted back their reply, Barabbas, Barabbas. But if I release Barabbas, Pilate asked them, what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? And they all shouted, crucify him. 
Crucify him. Why, Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the crowd only roared the louder. Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. And all the people yelled back, we take responsibility for his death, we and our children. So Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to crucify him. And let us pray. Holy God, your son was innocent and yet was condemned to die. Help us not to wash our hands when faced with those who are unjustly accused in our world. Amen. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death. The soldiers took him into their headquarters and called out the entire battalion. They dressed him in a purple robe and made a crown of long, sharp thorns and put it on his head. Then they saluted, yelling, Hail, King of the Jews! Hail, King of the Jews! And they beat him on the head with a stick, spit on him, and dropped to their knees in mock worship. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. Let us pray. Father, how you must have grieved to see your son beaten and mocked. Give us courage to end the violence in our own lives and in our own hearts. Amen. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet? Oh, thorns compose so rich a crown. As they led Jesus away, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country just then, was forced to follow Jesus and carry his cross. Great crowds trailed along behind, including many grief-stricken women. Two others, both criminals, were led out to be crucified with him. Finally, they came to a place called the Skull. All three were crucified there, Jesus on the center cross and the two criminals on either side. Jesus said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched and the leaders laughed and scoffed at him, 
Look at you now, they said. He saved others, but can't save himself. The soldiers mocked him too by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. A signboard was nailed to the cross above him with these words, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Let us pray. Amazing God, your sons endured cruelty beyond compare, but without complaint. Keep us humble in our daily lives with the willingness to put others before ourselves. Amen. criminals hanging beside him scoffed. So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it. Save yourself and us too while you're at it. But the other criminal protested, don't you fear God even when you are dying? We deserve to die for our evil deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. Let us pray. Lord God, despite his wounds, Jesus showed his love to a dying thief. Bind us to that love and help us to look beyond ourselves in order to share that love with others. Amen. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to this disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. Jesus knew that everything was now finished. And to fulfill the scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, 
So they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? This all happened on Friday, the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath. As evening approached, an honored member of the High Council, Joseph of Arimathea, who was waiting for the kingdom of God to come, gathered his courage and went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate could not believe that Jesus was already dead. So he called for the Roman military officer in charge and asked him. The officer confirmed the fact, and Pilate told Joseph he could have the body. Joseph brought a long sheet of linen cloth, and taking Jesus' body down from the cross, he wrapped it in the cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been carved out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone in front of the entrance Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where Jesus' body was laid. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen.